Hey guys, what's up? This is uh, C C Daddy, and today I'm gonna be telling you guys all the things you guys probably want to be looking out for for Lightfall, as Lightfall is just around the corner. It's Monday. Um, all right, it's actually Tuesday, but it's about to be reset, so one week away from Lightfall officially dropping. I'm gonna be telling you guys some things you want to be going for weapons, and I guess tips overall, like bounties, quests, things you guys want to be looking out for. So to start this video off right away, first thing, make sure you guys got your stats to what you guys want. As next season, resilience is getting nerfed, discipline's getting nerfed, I'm pretty sure intellect, everything, only things that aren't getting nerfed, I'm pretty sure are recovery and mobility. So make sure you guys have your stats first of all. Get artifice armor. I don't, I don't really know if I have any artifice armor on this character, but make sure you guys have artifice armor. Make sure you guys have all the things you want. It's mods, all the mods are given to everybody. Now they don't have elemental differences so now you can put any mod you want on any character watch out for ashes the assets it's going to be really helpful charge with light is going to be the next big meta as they're getting rid of elemental wells they're getting rid of everything other than power of light charge with light things like that so make sure armor and your builds are what you guys want that's just the whole armor piece i'm not really going to go too in depth on armor just make sure you guys are looking out for weapons, you guys are going to be wanting to go out for these weapons. Heritage is the big boy. Big, big boy. This is going to be super good for next season. Make sure you guys get reconstruction, recombination. This is probably going to be a meta shotgun. Not probably. It is because it already is. And they're getting a buff. All primary specials are getting a buff. So this is going to be crazy. I would say make sure you guys get the Izanagi's Burden too as the buff is also going to apply to it. This weapon is going to be hitting that big old damage. If you guys have the catalyst, I'd say rock it, obviously. It's going to make it this that much better. Very crazy, these two. Same with Succession. It is also going to be getting the buff because it's a primary. And Wither Horde. And Arby and Pardner Dust. Arbalist is going to be amazing for the day one raid as... It's getting the buff, so damage They're in general going is going to be crazy. We hit them now. I still think, even after all the linear nerfs, that Arbalus is still going to be up there. Still going to be amazing. 100% go for it. Pardon our dust is also on here, as I don't have it. I don't have it the max rank, but you can get blinding nades, auto loading, and Vorpal. This weapon right here is going to be amazing. Blinding nades are going to be crazy next season. And if you guys don't already have a good blinding nades GL, this is the GL you guys want right here. Pardon our dust. Go for it. Amazing. The Hawk one is just here because, you know, I just had it on my character. I actually d d don't look at this one. But all the other ones, these primaries are going to be your go-to special primaries. You guys can get some other primaries. I'll pull one over really quick. Some other good primaries next season. It's probably going to be the submission. Very solid. Scout rifles, like if you guys have a explosive payload surplus or so explosive payload anything, really hung jury and a submission. They're going to be amazing next season. I don't really know about a day one, but they're going to be amazing next season, so keep those in mind. Fighting line is just here for, you know, I love the fighting line. But tarnished... Um, yeah, this weapon is going to be very good next season as it is a scout rifle that can get Volk shot. I don't have it on, I don't have it crafted fully yet, but if you guys get that Volk shot on this scout rifle, it's going to be crazy. Forbearance, obviously, amazing weapon. This weapon is going to be crazy next season. Chain reaction, ambitious assassin, very good, very good for ag clear, very good for everything. It is just amazing. If you guys can get it crafted or are close to getting it crafted, really? do it 100%. You have this week and you also have the week before the day one if you guys are going to use it in the day one. If not, just just go for it. Just craft it. It's amazing. Akelos SMG. There is no reason you guys should not be crafting the Akelos SMG as every single day the vendors in the helm restock everything. So get this Akelos SMG. It is amazing. It is such a good weapon. Get it. Volk shot, threat detector, anything you guys want, it's amazing. Merciless is more of a very good for next season day one 
or just anything really end activity. I kind of have it on here because it's amazing for damage. It is an amazing exotic in general. I love it. It's a good fusion rifle. It's very good. Callus Mini Tool is on here, obviously, because it's Callus Mini Tool. I love this thing. It's so good for ag clearing. It's so good for everything. It is a amazing SMG. 100% I would say have it or get it because it's just crazy. Uh, Cartesian coordinate, I would also say, is on here. It really is more of a, if you like Cartesian, you don't really need it on here, but I would say have it. It is such a fun exotic. I mean, it's such a fun fusion rifle. It's so good for da just continuous sus uh, sustained damage. It's a very fun weapon if you need a special for heavies. So this is kind of where stuff gets a little bit tricky. Because as of right now, of course, linears dominate. But with a linear nerf, I think they're still going to be really good for overall damage. But for, you know, good burst, sustained, really quick damage, I think it's going to go to rockets. I think rockets and, of course, the grenade launchers. I'll get more on that, though. Rockets and grenade launchers are probably going to be amazing for next season in overall and burst damage. Xeno's on here. It's a consistent weapon. It's very fun to use. But Galahorn, of course, one Galahorn. Bump of the night with a demo, and then if you have one chill clip, you really only need one or two chill clips, as if you have more, it stacks and kind of breaks. Not really the best thing to be using, but if you have a rocket, or even a blowout, if you have a demolitionist explosive light, make sure you have impact casing, because impact casing just adds more damage. It's crazy. Make sure that you guys at least have a bump in the night crafted this might come down to last minute for some people who don't have any. Because you can buy this in the helm, but you kind of need to be quick with it because, you know, the season's coming out. Make sure you have at least a bump in the night. You have a, you can have a, another good rocket. I have a Hesed Vengeance I love using. I know Vorpal is not really that good, but I love my Hesons. I love the blowout. It's such a good weapon. Make sure you have a rocket ready. Same with the uh, Galahorn. Make sure you guys have the Cat, too. Catalyst just makes it that much better. Makes it two rounds. Amazing weapon. Now, on to the big boys. I think Anarchy next season is going to be a top tier contender. I think it's going to be amazing. It is such a good weapon. It's crazy. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's damage over time is crazy. You can pair it with weapons like Heritage or Succession. You can pair it even with like a Pardon Our Dust or just any grenade launcher. Amazing. Uh, they're going to be crazy next season with all the power grenade launcher buffs. This weapon is going to be the big focus of next season. But Windigo as well. I do not have a Windigo that's amazing yet. But what you guys want to look out for on a Windigo is... Explosive light, spike nades, and then I would say either a demolitionist, a field prep, or anything in the first slot. I don't know if demolitionist is actually on it. I think it is, but maybe not. Um, just look out for a Windigo, and then this season farm those, uh, farm those Windigos, get those anarchies this week. It's gonna be out this week, so make sure you guys get it. I cannot emphasize this enough. It is gonna be a amazing next season. As well as that, I would say still get Cataclysmic if you can. If you have a Cataclysmic, good. If you don't have one, it's fine. Um, but Cataclysmic is still going to be crazy next season. With the overall reserves and the overwhelming amount of damage perks Linears have, I still think overall damage are going to be amazing. I still think it's going to be hard to beat them as they're just so consistent and they always have a perk that just gives them like infinite ammo. Vice Stinger is also getting a nerf though. I know that Vice Stinger next season is not going to be like if you damage an enemy with something else, you get a small chance to reload the magazine. Now it's only going to be a portion of your magazine. So make sure you guys watch out for that. The portion of the magazine is going to be a very, a very bad nerf. So Linears, Vice Stinger ones at least, are going to kind of be not as good as they used to be. But Cataclysmic is going to stay just as big, just as bold, just as crazy as it was la like, like forever, just less damage. I still think the overall damage is going to be crazy. That's about, that's about as 
as as far as linears are kind of going to kind of go next season. Kind of keep your out for, eyes out for them, but don't think anything crazy of them because you know the the nerf is kind of heavy. I would also say, watch out for um, watch out for any like new nerfs or buffs because I'm pretty sure with how things are going right now, there's gonna be nerfs and buffs going to every weapon, a hundred percent. There's gonna be nerfs coming to, like, I would say maybe explosive light or something within that realm because a lot of weapons are getting like crazy buffs and it's it's just gonna it's just gonna kind of all depend on where they go with with like buffing and nerfing stuff that's kind of what i feel like for a base layout at least as far as i know right now that's gonna kind of probably be the the main few weapons However, there's a few more weapons that I'd like to talk about just for the time being as hypotheticals. Trinity Ghoul, Sunshot are going to be two amazing ag clearing weapons. Trinity Ghoul is always going to be amazing, but with the new buff to Sunshot, I feel like Sunshot has a chance to actually rise up to be one of the best ag clearing weapons in the game. Or maybe just weapons, period, because it is still a super solid weapon. 1,000 voices buff, I feel, is going to be crucial to its game. I feel as though 1K's buff might actually make it one of the top tier contenders for overall damage and sustained damage. As if you can get more Scorch and more things on a boss and it blows up more, it has the same kind of effect that Shatter has with Stasis, where you just get continuous damage. And that continuous damage portion kind of leads to an amazing amount of overall damage per person. And I feel as though 1k has a chance, not highly, not like highly likely, but pretty likely to become one of the best. Keep this weapon in mind. Keep this weapon in your guys' inventory. It's going to be super good. It's 100% going to be a weapon that I would say go for if you don't, if you ha don't already have it. You have... Well, it was just a farmable, so not really that much time. But try and get it. Three characters, try and get it. If you can get it, that would be amazing. After that, some of the loadouts kind of lead into more, you know, what you guys want to run for characters for the day one at least. Um, as far as uh, optimize, like being able to optimize the character. Make sure you guys have Aeon Soul. Aeon Soul, or I guess any of the Aeons, if you guys can just wear them, do the finisher, and get your guys a super Aeon Swift, Aeon Soul, any of them. Make sure you guys do uh, this one. Sect of Insight. You get If you finish a mini boss or boss, you get heavy ammo. And that heavy ammo is crazy. It's crucial to a day one. If if you have a day one in mind. Make sure you guys run these. To get as much heavy ammo. There's 100% going to be a damage check boss. There's 100% going to be a possibility. Of you running out of ammo. That always happens. Happens with War Priest. Happens with every boss. Happens all the time. When day ones. Caretaker was a prime example. Where people just did, just did not have enough ammo. War Priest. Prime example. All those bosses make sure and this is for every class if you guys don't have it already make sure you guys get it this is going to be a hundred percent needed for the day one at least as far as day one goes you know uh for hunters make sure you guys have starter scales orpheus rigs uh i'm not going to pronounce this because i always butcher it but falcon Make sure you guys have it it is an amazing exotic make sure you guys have omni oculus you're gonna want to do this because you throw a smoke data on two teammates, you get your you get your smoke data back. It is amazing. It's such a good exotic. You get resilience or not? Well, you get uh, resistance to adds. It can kind of make up for the resilience nerf. It's going to be really good. If you guys are fans of stasis, use mask of Baskers. This is going to be amazing for anarchy. Celestial Nighthawk is always going to be a good one. Not as good as Star Eaters with Marksman Golden Gun. But it's up there. Worm Husk, another great pick. Uh, young Ahamakara Spine is also an amazing one. 
I would say try and stick away from this as I feel as though tether and arc is going to be better. But if you guys have to run it, it's a very good exotic. It's it's still really consistent. It's, I would say, maybe top 500 exotics. It's up there. Titan. Um, I would say not really, not really much to, not really too much to work with here. You guys have the chess piece, Heart of the Most Light, and Cures to the Fallen Star. These two are probably going to be the most used. Laurel Lee Splendor for survivability. Helm of Satan 14, I would say, is also a good exotic. That's maybe Ursa Furiosa. I don't really see this becoming too good. I would say you guys should probably, for Titans, stick to the uh, Curious or Heart of the Most Light for any 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 subclass. They're kind of good for... I mean, well, Curious, of course, you can only do a Thunder Crash, but Heart of the Most Light, want to keep it on just to make sure you guys have your abilities, good damage for Storm Nades. Titans are kind of a hit or miss. Just kind of run whatever you guys feel is good. Now, Warlock is the big, the big, pff, the BBW, the big beautiful woman for the day one now the reason being Verity's brow is going to be up there I love Verity's brow such an underrated exotic uh, if there's any ability regen subclasses run this run this exotic if anything like a if Atheon v2 happens this exotic should be on the forefront of everybody's list you get five weapons matching your subclass, so if this is where the Callus Mini tool comes into play for Warlock. Cause come on, if you're if you're off of Solar, what are you doing? Seriously, use this or a Vision of Confluence. They're both amazing picks. Use these to get your let's go back to get your Death Thorns to five. To get your Death Thorns to five, that is gonna make your Solar like your Solar. Um, fusion aids, incredible. These are gonna be amazing for the day one. Make sure this and Starfire, uh, Starfire Protocol. Make sure these two are on your on your character. Fusion aids are getting a nerf. However, I feel I feel like the nerf is only gonna be the damage and nothing else. And you can still throw infinite nades, making these two, these two exotics crazy if it does ever happen the stag of course is going to be super good super good exotic it's for set for survivability really good for day ones uh put your rift down you get immunity not really immunity but you get resistance amazing exotic kernstein armlets melee kills give you health back it's kind of it's a very simple exotic very good exotic use it aeon soul amazing make sure you guys put that heavy and special finisher on gonna be very good. Um, Contra for Solo, very good for Void, but I kind of feel as though Solar is gonna be predominantly good. Phoenix Protocol is a good exotic, but if if Ashes the asset stays in the game, don't even worry about this. Luna Faction, of course, good exotic. Reign of Fire is an exotic that I feel like is underrated. You dodge and get all your weapons refilled instantly. This exotic is gonna be him. If you are, uh, if you are ever doing damage, make sure dodge, get all your ammo back. Amazing exotic, love it. Transversive steps, another good exotic. As far as gear goes, that's kind of where it stands. It's very open, very broad. The main ones to look out for though, just to recap: Aeon Safe, Aeon Swift. Aeon Soul. Those three are probably gonna be you're gonna need to have on every character. And then for Warlocks, make sure you have the stag, Verity's Brow, um Starfire Protocol, Reign of Fire, Luna Faction, any of those, insanely good. Hunters, make sure you guys have, you know, Star Eaters, Orpheus Rigs, Omnioculus, all very good. Hunter Exotics, Survivability, Worm Husk, Ascabascarus. You can kind of walk in with anything. It's just kind of up to you. Titans, make sure you have these two chess pieces and you should be fine. That's all Titans really can offer at this moment in time. Sad reality, but it's just kind of how it is. As far as primaries go for Exotics, stick with the Wither Horde. Just 
really just stick with the Wither Horde. There's not really much else to work with. Maybe Outbreak Perfected in the damage check, but that's about it. Um, secondaries, I would say stick stick with the legendaries more. Div, it's going to be good if there's a moving boss. Um, I would say Div is really the only one you need to look out for. Merciless like earlier, but as far as special goes, Sunshots, no, it's there. Trinity Goal is really good. Um, power weapons, I would say Anarchy, 1, 1k, of course, and then Gallahorn. Lament is one that I, really, I don't think I talked about, actually. Lament might be amazing. If there's any bosses that are super close counters, kind of like an Atrax type, maybe Parasite, actually. Lament and Parasite are probably going to be your best friend in the burst, super burst encounters. Make sure you guys either have Lament, Parasite, something in the realm, the possibility of DPS. Very good. As far as supers go, uh, kind of run whatever super you want. Builds for supers kind of vary. Um, I would say try and make a uh, try and make a build that you guys like. It kind of goes to what your play style is like. There's some that have really high ignitions for ag clearing. If that's what you guys like, do that. That's amazing. If you guys have any things that you guys really want in particular, go for it. Uh, super is kind of is just up to you. Um, but enough on that. Supers are kind of just there. For armor... To get really good stat rolls, I know I kind of breezed over this earlier. To get really good stat rolls, make sure you guys have a discipline, recovery, mobility, intellect, anything armorer. They're insanely good just to get at least the base amount that you want on a piece of armor. And you also need to remember that to get as what you want you need to kind of spread it out between three or four different categories as the bottom half equals the top half of an armor set. So if you want to get triple 100s or you know double 100s, make sure you guys have a bottom half to counteract the top half to get it. That's just a, a, a good fact to know. That's about it for armor though. Weapons, remember, stick to your good primaries, good secondaries, everything. That's about it as builds go. Or as far as weapons go, not really builds, but weapons go. Of course, make sure you guys have your bounty farm, bounty prep, bounty, bounty, bounties. Ascendant challenges, nightmare hunts, XP plus pluses, the Varix. Make sure you guys are doing your Ascendant challenges every week, your Varix bounties every week. The Shaha bounties are super easy, double XP plus, or XP plus pluses to get. Star Horse bounties are super good. Um... Uh, make sure you bounty farm. XP plus, XP plus plus is what you guys want. Just bounty farm as much as you can. A really useful tip is up here on the top right is how many bounties you have. Not completed, but how many you have. And down here is the total amount you can have. So, so you guys see I only have one quest. I deleted the character a while ago. Never really wanted to complete the quest. Can't delete it. So I have 38 out of 63. Where up here, I have 37. So that means I only have, you can, they, they stack together. So make sure you delete all the useless ones you don't need. Sure, maybe there's a catalyst that you guys are never going to do or there's something you guys are never going to do. Delete them. Get rid of them. This is way more important to Bounty Farm than to have some useless quests that you guys aren't doing anything with. Also, make sure you guys maybe keep this to a, to a two or three quest, like, like open, oh. so that you don't get, like, like, so it doesn't delete bounties because if you go over this limit it just starts deleting bounties when you get new quests so make sure you kind of keep it a three a three bounty like hold so maybe i don't need it up to like 60 maybe not the whole 63 that's kind of that for bounties the best bounties are the xp plus plus of course make sure in the downtime after the season's kind of like rolled out a little bit too you guys start uh, like going off like start turning in bounties that's really good to do as far as all of that goes um good luck to you guys as day ones i hope you guys enjoyed the video
Um, I'll, I'll probably be posting more videos like this too. Just so you guys can get the full rollout of what to kind of expect for a day one. I'll kind of go over what the Ascendant Challenge is, stuff like that. More in depth on bounty stuff. As far as loadouts goes, that's what I would say do for weapons. I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Uh, mommy, see daddy, out.